The north and south downs of southeast England frame like bookends a landscape that some 75 million years ago was forced upwards by massive earth movements to create a chalk-covered dome weathered away by ice, wind and water, exposing older sands and clays beneath. This is the weald, meaning woodland, when forests once covered the area, but the landscape that would have looked very different some 140 million years ago when dinosaurs roamed the swamps. At its centre is the sandstone high weald that includes St. Leonard's Forest and Ashdown Forest, whilst the weathered clays forming the wide valleys of the low weald are at its periphery. This protected hilly landscape designated as the High Weald Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty took a very long time to take shape and stretches from Horsham in the west to Rye near the English Channel. These Ordnance Survey maps cover the area. Our timeline begins when the Weald was covered by the sea. During the Dinosaur Age, sediments were deposited on a shallow seabed, forming inland sandstone cliffs as high as 50 feet. They can be seen at Eridge Rocks, Harrison's Rocks, High Rocks, Stonehill Rocks, and Toad Rock. They were much admired by the Victorians, who would hold sumptuous tea parties beneath the outcrops. At High Rocks, near Royal Tunbridge Wells, it still appears to be a desired location for that special day. Early hunter-gatherers used them for shelter, and today they are the haunt of rock climbers. Much of where we tread today has been forged by a history going back thousands of years. Six thousand years ago, people brought pigs to the weald, a process that lasted over five thousand years. They used regular roots, and deep tracks were worn into the soft soil. Their temporary camps were known as dens, a name that has also found life in place names such as Birch Den, the location being a birch wood. Two Roman roads to the coast cross Ashdown Forest, linking the iron workings and corn growing areas with London. The Lewis Road passes King's Standing, which at 731 feet is one of the most popular viewpoints on Ashdown Forest. Very little of the Saxon period remains. At Worth, now a suburb of Crawley and close to the M23 motorway, preserved within St Nicholas Church are three Saxon crossing arches. Unfortunately, a fire in 1986 destroyed the Victorian roof. The Battle of Hastings of 14th of October 1066 was fought on an empty hillside. There was no community then, but the most famous battle fought on English soil changed all of that. There is no visible trace of the battle, much of it now farmland and parkland, but William the Conqueror founded an abbey on the spot where King Harold fell. To commemorate his victory, he called it Battle Abbey, its needs founding the town of Battle, and although we refer to the conflict as the Battle of Hastings, the town, abbey and battlefield are about seven miles from present-day Hastings. You can go by train from Hastings to Battle, but the abbey, suppressed by Henry VIII, is now just a ruin. The abbot's lodgings became a residence for a close friend, and the gatehouse remained intact, now serving as the official entrance. 
King William exercised considerable control over the land, and measures included a huge building program of daunting castles and stunning cathedrals. Nothing demonstrates this better than the Doomsday Survey of 1086 that measured the wealth of the land. Forests like Ashdown were set aside for hunting by the royal court, created soon after the Norman conquest and continuing well into Tudor times. Today there is free access into Ashdown Forest, but 400 years ago it would have looked very different. With the abundance of wood, this natural resource supplied huge beams for timber-framed houses and warships that sank the Spanish Armada. Weatherboard cottages at Hartfield and elsewhere also show the use of wood to great effect in their construction, a village perhaps more synonymous with Winnie the Pooh, storybooks for children and grown-ups too. You can still walk to Pooh Bridge and play Pooh Sticks, but I think the bridge has been updated and made safe. Henry VIII courted Anne Boleyn at Hever Castle. The building dates back to 1270 and has been added to over the years. It is open to the public. Other castles and grand houses of this period include Burdium Castle, Groombridge, and later Bateman's home of Rudyard Kipling, Standon, and Scotney Castle. The house at Scotney dates from 1837 to 43 and is in the Neo Tudor style, but most visitors are attracted to the Romantic gardens. The eye catcher is the massive round tower of the castle that dates back to around 1378. It is moated and forms an integral part of the garden but the brick extensions are 16th and 17th century editions. The entire scene is a photographer's paradise. Then came the railways. Three main lines pass from north to south through the High Weald and include the London to Brighton line. At Borkham, a viaduct spans the Ouse Valley, carrying trains over 37 semicircular arches. There was an east-west line from three bridges near Crawley to Royal Tunbridge Wells. A short section still exists from Groombridge to Tunbridge Wells West as the Spa Valley Heritage Railway. The rest are now level walkways, the Worth Way and Forest Way, excellent for getting to know the area on easy paths. The line from London to East Grinstead continued through the High Weald to Lewis. That closed in 1955 but reopened as the much-loved Bluebell Railway, terminating at Sheffield Park. Here, a short walk across fields can be taken to the National Trust Garden, which, together with Nyman's and Wakehurst, are some of the Trust's greatest treasures. Earlier, we admired Worth Church, the Saxon arches, and in passing, don't miss Winchelsea for some striking 20th century stained glass windows by Douglas Strachan, installed as a memorial to the Great War. Commemoration of a different kind, but just as moving, is discovered at All Saints Tudley near Tombridge. Commissioned from the Russian artist Mark Chagall are 12 amazing stained glass windows in memory of a life 
tragically lost at sea. Catch the right day and the church interior is flooded by blues and yellows, a truly touching tribute to such a sad event. Portrayed incidentally in greater detail in the east window. <laughs>